your time. Uh, the, 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 pro, the profile committee, who is then charged with doing a profile of our, of our congregation, have been working uh, tirelessly for, uh, for a few months to prepare uh, our living faith story. Uh, and uh, this will be presented to the, to the congregation of both churches for, for our approval on Monday. At, uh, in a Zoom meeting at uh, 7 p.m., uh, there are. Uh, if, if you if you haven't been contacted with information on how you can join uh, the Zoom meeting, uh, please uh, uh, contact uh, contact the, uh, the the church at 902-868-2761, or uh, email the office uh, or uh, or Heli. Uh, and uh, people will send you an invitation to that Zoom meeting. I, I think there are copies of the Living Faith Story uh, here uh, for people who need that. It's also uh, in the, there's a link in the, uh, in the weekly uh, update, uh, the last weekly update, and it's also on the, uh, on, on the church's website. So everyone should have a chance to, uh, to get a hold of this and read it. Uh, on July the 31st, we're going to welcome uh, Garth and Milton, who are coming back to take, take the service, and that's something that we all look forward to every year when they return from, from their home in PEI. Uh, the Blessing of the Fleet, Fleet will be at the Sambor Public Wharf on Sunday, August the 14th at 11.30. Uh, a.m. and there won't be a 10, 10 a.m. service that uh, that week. Uh, and uh, you can still uh, contact uh, Reverend Helene uh, if there are any pastoral emergencies. So, uh, Byron Bino uh, will light Christ's candle. Christ shines for all to see. May it shine in our hearts and in our lives. Come, it is time to worship our God. We come with thankfulness and joy. To sing with enthusiasm. To pray with openness. To listen with anticipation. And to respond with our whole heart. Please join me in the opening prayer. Loving, Loving God. God Today we give thanks for the fresh breeze of summer, the rain that nourishes new life, and the warmth of the sun that gives health to our living. Bless this time together and guide us in the way that leads to life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almost 1,200 years ago, a Japanese poet whose name was Kino Sora Yuki wrote this. When we hear the warbling of the mountain thrush in the blossoms, or the voice, voice of the frog in the water, we know that every living being has a song. Let's sing the first hymn, Jesus Loved the Little Children. Repeat this voice.
prayer, praise and prayer for, for creation. Jeffrey was my tutor when I was at Union Seminary a, a zillion years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and he and his wife are both prolific writers. Jeffrey is a, is a hymn writer. And, uh, and they've produced this wonderful book. And I said, there must be something in here that I could use for the service. And so I opened it. And, uh, and, and I opened it at uh, chapter 19, which is the wisdom of indigenous cultures. And uh, so uh, I, I, I realized that one of the things that uh, is, uh, is particular about, uh, about these liturgies is that uh, Anne and Jeffrey uh, are both uh, Episcopalians. And uh, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that Episcopalians pray more than we do in the United Church. And so there are lots of prayers in this. Uh, and so the button up, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, there are so many prayers, in fact, that I knew that you'd get bored to listening just to me. And so I asked Lisa to, to join me. So this is a tag team, team match. And Lisa will begin. Prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Ho, oh, grandfather. Grandmother, you have made everything and are in everything. You sustain everything, guide everything, provide everything, and protect everything, because everything belongs to you. We are weak, poor, and lowly. Nevertheless, help us to care in appreciation and gratitude to you for everything. We love the stars, the sun, and the moon, and we thank you for our, our beautiful mother, the earth, whose many gifts nourish the fish, the fowl, and the animals too. Amen. O oh, great and kind spirit, you have always been, and before you nothing has been. There is no one to pray to but you. The star nations all over the heavens are yours, and yours are the grasses of the earth. You are older than all need, older than all pain and prayer. O oh, great and kind spirit all over the world, the faces of the living ones are alike. With tenderness they have come out of the earth from which you gave us food. Look on your people. With children in their arms they face the wind walk the red road to the quiet day to the day of quiet O oh, great and kind spirit fill us with light give us strength to understand and eyes to see deeply teach us to walk softly on earth as relatives to all that live help us without you we are nothing make our spirits one with yours great spirit help us to know like like the soaring eagle the heights of knowledge. From the four directions, fill us with the four virtues of fortitude, generosity, respect, and wisdom, so that we will help our people walk in the path of understanding and peace. Finally, great and kind spirit, help us always to return our thanks to you. Amen. Amen. We'll now share a responsive reading um, from the Psalms, Psalm 104. Um, in my bulletin, I have page 837. I don't know if, it, if it's page 837 in your bulletin. It's supposed to be page 827 if you're using the, the smaller version of the. So Paul, Psalm 104, part two verses 24 to 35. O oh God, how manifold are your works. With wisdom at your side, you make them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There lies the great and mighty sea, teeming with living things, both great and small. Upon it sail the ships, and there is Leviathan, the monster you made to play with. All these look to you to give them their food in due season. But you give them, they gather up. When you open your hand, you fill them with good things. 
But when you hide your face, they despair. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. But when you send out your spirit, they live again, and you renew the face of the earth. May your glory, O God, endure forever. May you rejoice, O God, in your works. When you look at the earth, it trembles. When you touch the mountains, they smoke. I will sing to God as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have been. And this is a, uh, a reading, a hymn to the earth uh, from Atharva Veda, which is part of the Hebrew, or the Hindu scriptures. O Mother, with your oceans, rivers, and other bodies of water, you give us land to grow grains on, on, on which our su survival depends. Please give us as much milk, fruits, water, and cereals as we need to eat and drink. O Mother, bearing folk who speak different languages and follow different religions, treating them all as res residents of the same house. Please pour like a cow who never fails a thousand streams of treasure to enrich us. May you, our motherland, on whom grow wheat, rice, and barley, on whom are born five races of humanity, be nourished by the cloud and loved by the rain. And now we're going to have an anthem.
Bantam had originally uh, one verse, and uh, our Susan composed wrote the other verses. So. <laughs> I just sat down for a few minutes and uh, wrote a few verses of the song. <laughs> Well, I sat down a few days ago to write this reflection on opening ourselves to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. But my mind didn't seem to want to concentrate on what I had hoped to be writing about. Instead, I found myself thinking about garlic. Strange, eh? But over the years, I've learned to show some respect for my wandering mind. To be sure, often my roving imagination is just setting snares for my good intentions, reminding me that there are a few chips in the bottom of that bag in the cupboard that should be cleaned up, or that maybe I should check on the Jays game, or that perhaps Catherine needs to go for a walk, or, or, or catering to my tendency to avoid the job at hand and put it off for just a few minutes, or a few hours, or a few days. Does this thought sound familiar to any of you? I know that for me, the temptation to Procrastination, my eighth deadly sin, is often too strong to resist. But this time, when I let my ma imagination follow the trail of garlic, bingo, bingo, it actually led me somewhere. I gotta say, I love garlic. I usually grow tons of it in my garden. I use it every day in my cooking, lots of it. My rule of thumb is that there's hardly any dish I cook for the family that can't be made better with garlic, and made even better still by the addition of more garlic. Because, well, garlic. <laughs> mm. But when I think back, it wasn't always this way. I grew up in Truro, where the standard fare was meat, potatoes, and overcooked vegetables, and no spices other than salt and a tiny bit of black pepper. Truro was a pretty waspy place when I was growing up. If someone was a foreigner, yes, who ate garlic, oh, you could actually smell it on them. I vividly remember being afraid of ever being caught with garlic on my breath. It paralleled my nightmares about being found naked on Prince, Prince Street. <laughs> if either of those things happened, how would I ever hold my face up and twirl again. Weird, but true. That's where I grew up. But now, garlic. Mm. In my family, we eat garlic every day. And I never, ever smell garlic on anyone's breath. Somehow, over the years, I became open to garlic and other spicy foods and has made my life much richer and certainly more delicious. So something that I was raised to fear and shun has become for me a blessing. As I've grown older, I've learned to open myself to other things that once seemed strange and maybe even scary. Yesterday, I went with my LGBT offspring decked in their rainbow flag cape to the gay pride parade enjoyed thousands of ordinary folks, both in the parade and lying the road, road sh joyfully shouting, happy pride at each other. This was something that I couldn't have imagined while meeting, eating overcooked veggies in the closeted Truro of my youth. Yet it adds riches to my family life and community that is surely a blessing. When I was at seminary, I remember hearing that the great Protestant theologian Paul Tillich had said near the end of his life that one of his great regrets was that he had not been more open to the insights of Eastern religions. He said that he now realized that his own Christian theology would have been far richer if he had been open to the wisdom flowing from other faith traditions. Over the years, working in various parts of the Nova Scotia Museum, I have worked with and befriended Mi'kmaq leaders and elders who have I've come to love and respect for their generosity, patience, and willingness to share the wisdom and values of the Mi'kmaq approach to society and the natural world. When I grew up in Truro, there was a large Mi'kmaq community next door 
but with my head deeply buried in my own culture, it was largely invisible to me. I admire Mi'kmaq insights that come from their closeness to the natural world. My friend Todd Labrador has spent years rediscovering and protecting, perfecting the, uh, the craft of building birch bark canoes. His grandfather was a, was a canoe builder and his hero. He speaks often about what he learned about canoe building in the world by working alongside his grandfather, watching him carefully and soaking up his wisdom and values. Todd said that he learned from his grandfather that to use the birch bark shoot spruce roots and ash splits effectively, you had to first respect them. I remember him telling me, the wood tells me how it wants to bend. My job is to listen. Once when we were sitting next to a stream in the woods, he said to me, I can remember grandfather sitting in a mixed woods just like this with me and pointing to all the different trees surrounding us and saying, above ground, all these trees look different, separate and apart. From here on the surface, you might think that they have to compete to survive. But if you look beneath the surface, you discover that their roots are intertwined and that they actually feed and support each other. It's the same with us humans, Todd. On the outside, we look so different. We Mi'kmaq people, white people, and black people, that often folks think that we can only survive through conflict and competition. But beneath these surface differences, the truth is that we need each other. We need each other's support and cooperation. That's the way that our society and world work best. Remember this. This is wisdom that I can relate to. Vine Faloria Jr. was a member of the Standing Rock Sioux Nation and an author, theologian, Christian theologian, historian, and activist for Native American rights. My friends Anne and Jeffrey Rothman use Vine's words as a reflection at the heart of their liturgy exploring the ecological wisdom of indigenous cultures. What he says is pithy and to the point. Vine maintains that American society and by extension Canadian society as well could save itself by listening to tribal people. He says, the land use philosophy of Ind Indians is so utterly simple that it seems stupid to repeat it. First, Man must live with other forms of life on the land and not destroy it. This makes sense. Check. Second, interest in the survival of humanity as a species must take precedence over the narrow economic interests of individuals. Check again. What does this mean for the way we act? Well, Vine says that in addition to cleaning up streams and rivers and cutting down on air pollution, a total change in land use should be instituted. An increase in oxygen producing plants and organisms should be made first priority. Vast land areas should be reforested and bays should be returned to their natural state. All this makes sense to me. How does it strike you? It's worth noting that indigenous people in North America had a sense of shared stewardship of the natural world rather than any concept of private, private ownership of the land, meaning that if you owned it, you could do to it what you liked. So Vine recommends, not without controversy, that to survive, white society should turn, return the land and water to the Indians, not by handing over the deeds, but in the sense that it restores the land and water to the condition it was before it was in before the white man came. Difficult to accomplish, perhaps, but a worthy, worthy and increasingly vital ecological goal that's shared by many people across our, uh, across our culture. I know that our relationship with the Mi'kmaq people and their traditional rights is controversial in our community. But I believe that there is wisdom and justice on both sides of this issue, if we are all opening, open to discovering this. As my friend Todd's grandfather would say, 
We need each other's support and cooperation. That's the way our society and world work best. If we can open ourselves to each other and find a path to trust, it will surely be a blessing for us all. May it be so. Amen. Now turn to the litany. Are you doing the hymn first? Oh, we're doing, oh, oh, we are doing the hymn first. That's why I needed Lisa. Number 371. in our families, for honest, open communication to say what we need to say in safety and without fear. We give thanks for the knowledge you give in all traditions of the world. Help us to honour the gifts of all traditions. Teach us to know how to love in the middle. We give thanks for new life, for youth, represented by the eastern direction. We give thanks for new learning, for the sun which rises to begin each new day, and for the teachings of the people of the east. Teach, Teach us, us to know, know how, how to, to love, love and live. We give thanks for the people of the south, for the growth of the summertime in our lives, the learnings of our adult lives, to be kind and accept ourselves. Teach us as parents to love and respect our children, to care for the elders and those who cannot care for themselves. Teach us, Teach us to, to know, know how, how to love and live. We give thanks for the West, for the gifts of Aboriginal peoples of the world, 
for understandings of care of the earth, for teachings about rocks, leaves, and trees, for the knowledge we have in our own teachings, all of those, all of these given by our Creator. Help us to use our understandings to bring joy and new life to our communities. We give thanks for the people of the North and for the elders in our families and communities. Help us to receive gifts of wisdom from all peoples. Help us to grow our roots deeper through life's journey, that we may grow in kindness to ourselves and each other. Teach us to know how to love and live. And now, as is our custom every Sunday, we'll, we will prayerfully pray for the people who are closest to us. And uh, so, are, are there any people that any of you would like remembered in our prayers? My, my friend John Young is in hospital. Uh, my uh, my brother-in-law's sister-in-law's father, Doug Marks, uh, recently fell and broke his hip, and uh, is now in the rehab in the, in, at the at Camp Hill, and. My, my, my dear friend, Jeffrey Rothorn, who, uh, who was my tutor at Union Seminary uh, and who wrote our last hymn and uh, with his wife Anne wrote much of this uh, uh, liturgy. Uh, there seems to be uh, broken hips going around these days because he recently fell and broke his hip and he's just started his rehabilitation. Could, I'd also like to um, request prayers for my father who um, is waiting results of the CT scan um, on his prostate. Pray for those who are uh, going through illnesses and awaiting treatment that um, that they'll be uh, comfortable, that they'll come through well, and also that our health system uh, will be supported and will be available to them. And, uh, let's pray for that in general. There's a crisis with our health system now, and there's a lot of people that are in need of it. I just uh, pray for wisdom with our government in that area. Oh God, we learned when we were children that uh, you see the sparrow fall, fall uh, and it meets your tender view. And we trust that if you care for the least of these your creatures, you care also for us. We want to pray for all the people who have been impacted by the pandemic and uh, have suffered losses in their family, have suffered, are continuing to suffer from long COVID. Uh, we realize that uh, we seem to be heading into a new wave of the pandemic. This is again putting incredible stress on our hospitals and health, the whole healthcare system. And, uh, and we 
We pray for those people who, uh, who are caught by this, uh, who are enmeshed in a system that has too few resources to deal, deal with too many problems. We pray for, for all our friends and family who, uh, who are impacted by this. We pray especially for Margaret and her family as they deal with her cancer. We deal, we pray for the family of Betty Gray, family and friends of Betty Gray, who just recently passed away. We pray for John Young, who's in the hospital, Doug Marks, who broke his hip and is in rehab, Jeffrey Rothfall, who is beginning to re rehab from just having broken his hip. We pray for Lisa's father, who's waiting on the results of his tests for prostate cancer. Oh God, lift up all, all, all of your people who are suffering, uh, who, who, are, who have loved ones who are suffering, and give them your peace and support and love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Friends, God's love is for each one of us, blessing us as we gather in community. We are invited to offer our gifts in response to that love and as a sign of our commitment to live in God's loving way in all that we say and do. Let us join in singing our offering hymn. May the offering we give today make a difference in the lives of others, O oh God. May it be a reflection of our love for you and a sign of hope for the world. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession and dedication, which is printed in your bulletin. We'll read this in you. Grandfather, Grandfather, look at our brokenness. Now, now we must put the sanctity of life as the most sacred principle of power and renounce the awesome might of materialism. We know that in all creation, only the human family has strayed from the sacred way. We know that we are the ones who are divided and our ones must come back together to worship and walk in the sacred way. Grandfather, sacred one, teach us love, compassion, and honor that we may heal the earth and heal each other. Amen. And we'll sing the final hymn together. Uh, the words are printed in, in the bulletin. Uh, this is... Uh, the tune of this hymn will be familiar to you. Trust me. <laughs> this was written by my friend Jeffrey Hoffman. <laughs>
Overshadow us now with your beauty and your joy, that our world may know a Sabbath of wholeness and peace today and forever. Mm -hmm. 